Yo, what's going on YouTube? My name's SoFlo Sneakers, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about Gmail farming. So Gmail farming is super slept on and usually isn't taken into account by beginners when they're calculating their startup costs and what they're actually gonna need for their botting setup for it to be successful. So having solid, trusted Gmail accounts are a super, super important part to sneaker botting, and how you get these solid, trusted Gmail accounts is gonna be through farming. So in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining what farming is, how much it costs, what softwares we use to farm, why we farm, and I'm also gonna be going over a lot of important information for Gmail accounts. And also keep in mind that this is gonna be part one out of a little mini series that I'm gonna make all about farming and Gmail accounts because I promise guys, this is a super, super important part to sneaker botting and you really have to get this down if you wanna take your sneaker botting to the next level. So make sure that you really pay close attention to this video because this is gonna be the basics and then the next video is gonna be some more advanced farming techniques and different things you can do to get your Gmail accounts trusted faster. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video because I'm super excited to make it for you, especially because there's just no content out there whatsoever on this. So I'm super, super excited and I hope you guys enjoy. So on that note, let's get into it. So the easiest way that I would explain farming is you're basically just creating human-like activity on your Gmail account so that it becomes more trusted by Google. The ultimate goal from farming our Gmails is that we want to achieve something called a one-click. So if you've ever had to solve a CAPTCHA on a website, which is basically just verifying your human by clicking the sidewalk, the trees, the buses, the fire hydrants, whatever it may be, this means that you did not get a one-click CAPTCHA. But if you went to go click on the box and it just checked off and you didn't have to solve anything, this means that you did get a one-click CAPTCHA and this is exactly what we want. So why we want these one-click CAPTCHAs is if we're on a website and we are required to solve a CAPTCHA to check out, we obviously want to be as fast as possible. And it's obviously a lot faster if you just get the check mark rather than if you have to sit there solving and picking the fire hydrants or the trees. So having a one-click Gmail account means that you're very trusted by Google and you don't have to solve anything to verify that you're a human. It'll just check the box off for you and then you'll be through the CAPTCHA, through to the checkout or whatever it may be. So it's obviously very beneficial to have these one-click Gmail accounts because this is gonna be the fastest way that you're gonna get to the checkout page if you have to solve a CAPTCHA. Speed is very, very key to sneaker botting. So having a bunch of different one-click Gmail accounts is going to be super, super important to be as fast as possible and to be able to get as many checkouts as possible. So you may have noticed that this already happens to one of your Gmail accounts where you already have one clicks and I'm assuming that you've probably had this account for a long time and you've been using it every day, every couple days, and you just check your emails and just do normal human stuff, you know? Because that's exactly what Google is looking for. They're looking for human activity on the Gmail to make sure that you're not a robot or a spam account or whatever it may be. So if you already have a one-click account, this is a great, great start. And now what I'm gonna do is go over to my server where my farming software is located so we can take a look at that. So now you guys can see we're on the server and I have two different software is pulled up. The first one in black is called AYCD and the one behind it is Code Essentials. So I'm going to be going over AYCD first and the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be the price. So if you go onto their website right now, it is going to be $30 a month for something called Toolbox. So as you can see, I just pulled up the Toolbox right here and along with one click, which is what we're gonna be using for farming, they give you some other options too. So you have a spoof browser, a billing converter, bot manager, server gen, cookie gen, and they're all just additional features that you can use that are gonna help you out with your botting and just making everything run more smooth. But the one we're gonna be looking at today is gonna to be one click right here. So like I said, it's $30 a month if you go onto their website, but if you actually check out my cook group video and join the cook group in the description, Ramen F and F, they have a partnership with AYCD, which brings the cost down to $23 a month. If you're in another cook group, they might have a partnership that's even cheaper than this. Like for example, mine is one click X Calicos, which is a cook group and I pay $18 a month currently. So another thing is that with AYCD and Code Essentials too, they both have discord groups and AYCD especially has very extensive guides if you need any help setting up, any help whatsoever with the process of getting your Gmails ready to go. They have a very good support team, very good Discord, very good website. So if you need any additional help after this video, they will definitely be able to assist you with that. 
So I'm just gonna run through AYCD real quick and just kind of go through the different tabs here. So the accounts tab, this is where all your Gmails are gonna be along with the proxy that is listed with them. And for this video's purposes, I'm obviously gonna have them blurred out. So I've already been farming them all morning. So you can see that they all say taking a break, but when they're actually farming, you're gonna see a bunch of different messages here. It could say watching YouTube, switching activities, uh, viewing a product, anything, Google News, anything along those lines. And that's basically just a browser open with the Gmail account and proxy that you assign to it. And it's just generating activity on that account. So you'll be able to see everything that the Gmail account is doing, the activity it's generating right on the action log here. And you can actually click this little eyeball and you can see exactly what video it's watching or what Google news that it's reading, anything along those lines. Uh, you can see the status of all my accounts are good except this one down here says controller error. If you do get this error, just let it keep running. It's not a big issue. Uh, you could see login error, and then that means there's something wrong with the login info. Either your Gmail isn't correct, the password, the recovery. And then over here on the right, we could see the one clicks and which accounts have these one clicks. So the only way that this is gonna change from no to yes is if you actually test the accounts for one clicks. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a bit. So before I jump into the proxies tab, I just wanna go over a few key points about Gmail accounts. So the first thing I wanna talk about is age. The older the Gmail account, typically the better. When a Gmail account is older and it has some age, it usually has more trust with Google, although this isn't the case all the time, so you just have to be wary of that. In my Gmail list, I personally have some Gmails that are from 2008, but I have others that are from 2016, and I have others that are from 2018, and just when you get your Gmail accounts, an easy way you can check is you just have to go to the first mail that was sent to you, and that'll be the date that the account was created. If you wanna go ahead and just create a bunch of new Gmail accounts, just create 10, 20 Gmail accounts, it's gonna be very difficult to get these accounts to one clicks very quickly. I'd say minimum off of a new account, it's gonna take at least two months to get them to a one click. So unless you have the time for that, and maybe it might be a good option if you wanna just have some accounts that you don't have to pay for, and you could just take the time to farm them yourselves, then that might be a good option. But if you're looking for some accounts for the next drop or the next few drops this month, then purchasing them from a provider is probably going to be your best bet. The second thing that I wanted to talk about is the source of the Gmails. So let's just say that you wanna buy it from a provider because you don't wanna wait and you don't wanna make them and farm them up yourselves and all that stuff. So you wanna make sure that you're getting from a reputable source. So I have a few different sources that I get from or that I've gotten from in the past because I haven't bought Gmails in a little while because I've been farming these ones up. But you can go on Twitter and you can just probably type in Gmail or one click, anything along those lines and you can definitely find some other providers. Or if you're in a cook group, ask them for recommendations. I'm personally not gonna give any Gmail recommendations for this video just because I don't wanna steer you guys wrong because Gmail accounts are very tricky and you could get from one provider and it works and then I could get from the same provider and then they don't work. So that's kind of why I'm not gonna be sharing any specific providers, but you guys should ask your cook groups, go on Twitter, look up anything with Gmail and one click. You know, There's definitely a lot of providers out there and just do your due diligence, do your research and just try to find a provider that has pretty good prices that works for you. So most providers are gonna sell one clicks for upwards of $15 an account but other providers will sell not one clicks, but trusted Gmails with a high trust score, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute, for roughly, I'd say seven to $12. It really just depends on the provider with what price point they're asking and their source from the accounts, where they're getting the accounts from, if they've been farming them or not. You also wanna check that if the Gmail comes with a proxy that it's had activity on, that's a very good option if you can get one of those for a decent price. So let me just talk about the trust score real quick. So one clicks have to do with something called a V2 CAPTCHA. And that's what I was talking about before where you have to pick on the sidewalks or the trees or whatever it may be and verify that you're a human. But when we're talking about trust score, that's gonna be relating to a V3 CAPTCHA. So that's a newer type of CAPTCHA and these type of CAPTCHAs are actually being used on Yeezy Supply and Adidas. And this basically just gives your Gmail a trust score ranked 0.1 through 0.9. 0.1 is obviously the worst and 0.9 is gonna be the best and that means that the account is trusted by Google. If you have accounts that are 0.1 and 0.3, more than likely they have a flag on them or they have security alerts, something along those lines. But just because an account is a 0.1 or a 0.3, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get it up to a 0.9. 
I've had Gmails on here that went to a 0.1 but after a while and after farming them back up, they have risen back to 0.9s and some of them actually have risen back to one clicks. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to test them and kind of just see where your Gmail's at with the trust score and if it has a one click or not. So I'm gonna do this account right here and this account doesn't have a one click and I don't think it's going to for a little while. I've been farming this account for about a month roughly uh, about two months on this proxy and I'm gonna get into proxies in just a second because that is another huge huge thing that you have to get down so what I'm gonna do since this account is running right now I'm gonna click the X and then it says ready and then I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna hit test recaptcha and then it says recaptcha testing should not be performed more than once every 24 hours and that's another thing that I wanted to say uh, once you get your accounts, don't be testing them every day. I give it at least three to four days in between testing, although I probably should be giving it a week. Uh, if you keep testing them, keep testing them. You're just going to wear out your recap three score, which is the trust score, and you're just going to wear out the one clicks, and you're just going to have less at the time of the drop. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you could definitely test them right when you get them. Uh, maybe farm them up for a day and then test them, but just be wary with the testing. You, you don't want to be testing very frequently. So we are sure we want to proceed. Yes. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. So reCAPTCHA v2 checkbox. So that's going to be the normal CAPTCHAs. That's going to be for Shopify. And the reCAPTCHA v2 is actually going to be for Supreme, the invisible CAPTCHA. But the checkbox is just with the trees and whatever else where you got to fill it out and then hit verify. So, but we're going to do the V3 score right now, and that is the recapture trust score, and then we are going to hit run. So now, as you can see, it said creating browser, verifying account, and then it is going to test the score right now. I believe that AYCD changed their method of testing, so they test it three times, and they take the most accurate score out of all the three, or they average them, something like that. So I'm pretty sure this account is going to be a 0 0.9, 0 0.7. Okay, that's still pretty good. Uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, they both mean that the account is relatively trusted. I just tested this account, I think, like yesterday or two days ago, so I probably shouldn't have tested it just now, but it's okay. Uh, I'm not going to be using this account for any future drops for a little while at least. So now I'm going to show you guys what would happen if I tested it for a one click. So we're going to do test recapture. So it's a 0 0.7, so more than likely it's not going to be a one click. Typically when you have a one click, the account is already a 0.9 and it is very trusted by Google. But I'm going to show you guys what happens when you don't have a one click and then I'll be able to show you guys what happens when you do. So we will go test and then for this one we're going to want to do the V2 checkbox since we're going to try to test for the one clicks. So creating browser, verifying account and then it's going to open up a new browser and then we're going to have to physically click on the uh, checkbox. Alright, so we're going to click I'm not a robot. And you could see it's not a one click. It would have just checked off if it was. So then we could just hit the traffic lights, whatever. Uh, vehicles. All right, bro. Cars. And then another little thing that's actually a good example. So when the captures are all fuzzy like that, that means that the account is like eh, trusted, if that makes sense. So also if they're slow fading. So if you watch this one, that's not super slow fading, but if you have one that's fading even slower than that, that means that your account is not trusted. So these were even pretty slow fading. So this account is like, eh, and I have to click on so many cars, but that should do it. So yeah, so now you can see it says one click failed, and that means that this account doesn't have a one click, which I already knew and which is totally okay. So out of my 25 accounts, currently 11 of them have one clicks, it's hard to maintain because Google is constantly sending out bans and just trying to crack down on people using Gmails that they didn't make, so on and so forth. But yeah, so that was just the V3 test and the V2 test. So as you guys can see, that's kind of how it works. Uh, if you get a 0.1 or a 0.3, uh, right when you buy it from your provider, definitely contact them. You wanna make sure that they have some kind of guarantee. A lot of these providers have like a three-day guarantee on their Gmails. So hopefully once you get them from them, they'll work with you if it's not a good account and they'll swap it out for you there. So somehow this video is already at 15 minutes long, so I'm sorry for that. I'm trying to make it as short and precise, I guess, as possible. So we're gonna hop right into the proxies here 
And I also don't think I'm gonna have time to go over essentials, so I'm really sorry about that. But if you guys want me to make another video on essentials, just let me know down in the comments below. And like I said, there's a part two coming to this also, which is gonna have like, there's just so much more that I wanna talk about. So, but I'm gonna try to wrap this video up. So let's get into the proxies. So I'm gonna obviously gonna have my proxy list cleared out here. So proxies are huge, right? So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is for farming, you definitely wanna be using data centers, not residentials. And the reason behind that is because if you're watching YouTube and just doing basic farming activities on a residential proxy, it is going to absolutely eat through your data plan. And because data centers have technically unlimited data, those are what you're gonna to wanna to be using when you're farming. Another big key to farming is that you don't want to be changing up your proxy constantly. And so what this means is at the time of the drop, you're going to want to be using the Gmail and the proxy that you've had farming together. So you want to be using the same proxy with the same Gmail that you've been farming with AYCD so that Gmail is familiar and it's trusted on that proxy. And if you guys have any more questions, if that didn't make sense, just let me know down in the comments and I'll answer them for you 100%. So you wanna be using data center, not residential, and you typically wanna be using a provider that has capture proxies. You could just use regular data center proxies, that is okay, but some providers have specific proxies for CAPTCHAs. The one that I would recommend for CAPTCHA proxies is probably gonna be cookie proxies. I used to use them a lot, but now I actually use Oculus proxies, and they're not CAPTCHA proxies, they're just regular DCs, but the reason why I use Oculus is because after my plan expires, after one or two months, I can actually keep the same proxies, and this is very, very important. So whatever provider you wanna use, make sure that you can keep the same proxy on that Gmail, and that they won't just give you a new list of proxies because then you're going to have to change the proxy and then the Gmail trust score is going to go down. But if you've been using a Gmail on the same proxy for months, then those two, the Gmail and the proxy are very trusted together and they're going to work very, very well on a drop. You want to be using a provider that says that their proxies can be used for capture farming and that they won't be banned or anything along those lines because if you have a bad proxy on your Gmail, that is going to kill the trust score and you definitely don't want that to happen. So you wanna make sure that your provider guarantees that you can farm with them and that that is okay. And you also wanna to try to find a provider that will let you renew your plan with the same proxies so you don't have to make any IP switches. I'm not really gonna talk about Autosolve in this video. I'm gonna to have to make another video for that one too. But essentially, Autosolve is just a replacement for your bot solver. So if you have Splash Force, you know the solver in there isn't the best. Uh, it crashes and so on and so forth. But Autosolve is a very great alternative, but I'm gonna to have to make a whole nother video on it. And I'm using Autosolve for the Zion drops. I just wanted to throw that in there as well. So let's move on to settings. So settings, you are gonna to wanna to leave the settings the same. The default settings are perfect. AYCD, the support, the owner, the team, they have been testing Gmails for months and months on end, and they've created these default settings for you guys, so you don't really wanna be changing these. So I just leave all of this the same. If you want, you can put your Discord webhook in here, so when you test for a one-click, you can kind of just keep track of which accounts are one-clicks and not. You can obviously change the language here. You can sleep accounts at night. That's a personal preference. Uh, I've seen some support members say, yes, do this. Uh, I personally just turn my server off at night so I don't have to do this. Uh, if you do want to change the settings, you just got to triple tap on this right here and then, or maybe five times. So it says I can't switch to the developer mode when the accounts are running, but basically if you click on this five times, more options are going to pop up and then you can kind of adjust the settings of when your accounts are running and when they're not. But I definitely recommend just leaving this on the recommended settings and you should be good to go. So as always, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. And just keep in mind that this is part one out of a part two or three series. I have so much more information that I wanna talk about and I'm super excited to bring that out to you guys. So just make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna stay updated with the channel. And on that note, I'll catch you guys on the next one.